for those who haven't met you yet, Emma, um, who are you and what do you do with your pet? Yes, good morning, Robert. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Emma Lynch and I'm part of the Tear Fund Ireland team. Uh, I've met many of you before on my visits to Carrigrawn and I'm very sorry not to be able to be with you in person here today. Uh, Tear Fund Ireland is a Christian relief and development agency. So we try and bring aid in emergency and disaster situations. And also our desire really is to see people lifted out of poverty for good. Thanks, Emma. And I know you guys are working in many challenging places. Um, what is your focus at the moment with a harvest time? Uh, so our, our harvest focus really this year is on the country of Ethiopia. We have a lot of work going on there um, with very poor and vulnerable people. It's a country of 100 million people and um, a huge issue around uh, people being able to get good enough harvests to, to, to feed their families each year. So this harvest time, our focus is on are there ways that we can help um, groups and people in Ethiopia to have a better harvest. So you're saying about a, a better harvest, what does that mean to people in rural Ethiopia? In rural Ethiopia, they're really experiencing the effects of changing weather patterns. And so increasingly, um, they're finding that for up to seven months of the year, um, families may only be able to stretch to having one meal a day. Uh, so people are very, very vulnerable and um, really deeply affected uh, by their relationship with the land and whether or not um, they can get a good harvest each year. So you're saying about the relationship with the land and this, this how, you know, how, how does Tear Fund help in those situations to improve um, the situation for people who are only living on one meal a day? So as I said, um, Tear Fund's, uh, I suppose our vision, our hope, what we're working towards is seeing people lifted out of poverty for good. So we're always looking for new innovative ways uh, to help people um, find new ways of farming, find new ways of setting up little businesses to help uh, just, just have better crops and to generate income. So one of the areas we've been working on a lot in the last few years, since 2002, um, is an area called conservation farming. It's a new uh, counterintuitive method of farming for many in Ethiopia. But just with the changing climate, it seems to be enabling people to have a much, much better harvest. Thanks. Um, I think there's a video here and we'll hopefully try and run that. Absolutely. So I'd love to introduce you to a couple uh, called Matthias and Amarech. And um, they are people, well, she's the plucky one who decided to try this new method of farming, even though her neighbors and her husband uh, thought she was a bit crazy. So you'll see in the video uh, their journey and how it's actually transformed um, their lives and the lives of their neighbors. Okay, hopefully the technology will work and we will run this video. My husband and I dropped out of school at a young age to get married. Since then, we have had seven children. Life here is a daily struggle for many. With one-acre farms and erratic rains, people here only eat one meal a day for seven months. I often feared for my family. The soil had become sandy and infertile. When we can't grow enough food, we are forced to buy it, but we can't afford much. Our children complain of their hunger. They became weak and irritable. We lived year after year like this, just surviving. But then I heard about something at church called conservation agriculture. When I first heard of this new farming method from my wife, I dismissed it. I didn't believe it could really work, but she insisted to give it a try and said she would do all the work. Then I got to work, digging the holes, mulching and planting. Many of my friends considered me a crazy woman. They would make jokes about me when I was doing this. But then came the harvest. When that year's harvest came, I couldn't believe it. We grew 151 kilograms of maize and 49 kilograms of pigeon pea, much more than we had grown in the past. From that point on, 
I was a believer. We have converted all our fields to conservation agriculture. Then I joined a self-help savings group that started at our church. The name of this group is Love because without love we are helpless. Before and after every meeting we pray because God is the Alpha and Omega. The group has taught me how to save and given me access to loans from the group savings. By taking loans, I was able to start a coffee trading business. Thanks to Conservation Agriculture and the Savings Group, our life has been transformed. Our second year, we grew over 500 kilograms of pigeon pea and have also started selling beans, taro, coffee, peas and pumpkins. For the first time in our lives, we had product to sell in the market. It was a joyous celebration in our family. Because of my coffee business, we were able to pay for one of our daughters to go to college to study English. My wife has been the backbone for me and our children. Throughout it all, she was encouraging. I am training 50 neighbors and my pastor and giving them seed. Our church has set up a model farm to train the community. All we have is a blessing from God. We learned to care for His creation and the land, and we enjoy God's blessing. My favorite verse is from Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does help come from? My help comes from the Lord. I never thought something so simple could change my life forever. But with God, anything is possible. So Emma, having seen this video um, and uh, we've heard from John 21 and the, the first bit of that chapter, um, what does that have to say to us about challenging times um, that we're living through both here in Ireland and also in the context that we've just witnessed there in the, the video in Ethiopia? So I suppose just with, with COVID-19 and just just as the week goes on, weeks go on here, um, you know, the restrictions are changing in different places and it's very uncertain. And I think in times of uncertainty, we tend to cling to, to what's familiar and what we've done before. And in this passage in John 21, for the disciples, it was, it was a post-resurrection world um, and, and their world had been turned upside down. Now they had um, seen Jesus since the res resurrection, but on this occasion, they didn't recognize him at first. Um, you know, just it was a very new situation. And they, they decided to go back to what was familiar and they fished all night and they didn't catch anything, you know, and food was a big issue just as it is in Ethiopia. Um, but then Jesus said to them, listen, cast your net on the other side of the boat. And, um, th you know, they said, okay, well, well, we will try this. We'll try something different. We'll try something counterintuitive, even though they've been fishing all night. And when they got the catch, obviously they realized that it was actually Jesus instructing them from the shore. And in Ethiopia, you know, we're, we're just getting um, enough uh, harvest each year to feed your family, uh, where things are so uncertain. Just for, for Matthias and his wife, Amaret, you know, these new methods of farming, just it, it may seem um, like in a certain time, it's better to stick with what you know. But they decided to take a risk and try something new and try something different. And um, as you saw in the video, you know, just they yielded a, a much better harvest. And the lovely thing is that they're reaching out to their neighbours and to the community and giving them seed and helping them to try it too so that they can uh, have more food for their families too. So even though conservation agriculture sounded crazy, um, actually uh, trying something new uh, was the wise way uh, to go. And I suppose the message really is, you know, in times of global uncertainty, uh, like we're facing at the moment, um, we need to trust the voice of God, support each other. And just as, as Amrit shared with us about her favorite verse, wonderfully with God, anything is possible. Mm. I love that in terms of that sense of 
uh, yeah, that, that trying something new, that taking the risk. Um, and certainly that's what I, in terms of that video, um, the, uh, she took the risk of trying the new thing, even though the community were laughing at her, that actually that sense of um, newness, uh, that sense of something new, but actually it yielded a crop. And certainly in our own context here, uh, the, the, new, the new thing seems a bit ridiculous at the minute with all the, the craziness that's going on, but actually um, that actually God is at work in all sorts of different ways and in different ways across um across the uh, across ireland um so it's truly really quite um good, good uh, great take on that that particular uh, passage um you know, what is um like like at present in ethiopia do you have any updates about the no, absolutely and i would also like to point out that that video was shot before social distancing um so you know you saw groups of people so we are just so grateful to God that um, just those small groups that Amaretch and her husband just would be part of and, and her husband linked with the community, those small groups have been able to continue, but like in just much smaller numbers and they meet outside. So, you know, at sort of distance from one another. But even as just the, there where you are at the centre in Balancholic, um, just being part of the community, that community uh, coming together even in a socially distanced way, uh, really makes a difference at times like this. So the, the small groups have been able just to continue, as I say, in a distance and much smaller way uh, to keep encouraging one another. The other thing that we have been hearing as well is that those who've engaged in this conservation agriculture, obviously, are continuing to get the good yields and able to feed their families. Um, at the very beginning of, of COVID, uh, you may have heard on the news but um, the government in Ethiopia called for um, a nationwide prayer for God to protect the nation from COVID. Now, they don't have huge testing in the country. However, um, their numbers relative to other nations have been quite low. So they've actually had less deaths in a country of 100 million people reported than we have in Ireland to date. Uh, so this is a remarkable thing. However, our partners would ask us to really pray that uh, COVID doesn't take hold in rural areas. It's mainly in cities and towns now, but in the rural areas where people are really mixing together um, and there are very few health facilities, they're really praying um, that COVID won't take hold there. Um, but we're just so grateful to God that um, just an, it looks different, but actually uh, much of the work, the foundational stuff that we've been doing for the past number of years has been able to continue. Thanks, Emma. Um, I suppose, as with um, a lot of this stuff, the, you know, it's what can we do? Um, and uh, the, certainly um, in terms of prayer and in terms of getting involved, because I know some people here mightn't have uh, been involved with Tier Fund before, so I know there is a link between the parish and Tier Fund. But well, how, um, firstly, in terms of prayer, I'm sitting in the prayer space here. Um, what um, sort of prayer points do we uh, um, do you have, and also how can people who are listening in get more involved with you guys? Right. Okay. So over the last uh, few years, just from Tier Fund here in Ireland and our supporters. Hundreds of new little groups, self-help groups, have been set up across Ethiopia. And we're about to enter a new phase. We're hoping to set up more. So €145 Euro would actually set up a self-help group, uh, which obviously impacts all those people's families. Um, in terms of just on a monthly basis, uh, just a gift of €25 Euro a month can also keep uh, a self-help uh, group going. Um, so... But just, you know, there's financial ways to get involved, but we're always looking for prayer partners. So um, we just really value prayer just for this new phase of self-help groups that um, they will really get off the ground. Obviously, it's challenging for, for, you know, nurturing these little groups at the moment, but just prayer that many more groups um, can be started will be great. Uh, we're really thanking God as well. Um, because we're involved with churches and church networks across Ethiopia. 
and at the beginning of the, uh, the COVID crisis and continuing, um, just we have been supporting them to spread correct messages uh, about COVID, hand washing, all of these sort of things. And they are really listened to in their communities as sort of safe sources of information. And uh, they've been handing out, you know, just um, soap and the different hygiene things people may need. And um, so we just really value prayer as well, that they will continue to be able to promote, um, you know, the, those, the, the true and positive messages to help people get through this. Um, just mm -hmm. let me look here and just see, just, and again, as I mentioned, just we, we really value prayer that COVID won't take hold in rural areas. Um, and finally, just for the government of Ethiopia, there are many challenges. There's poverty, there's COVID, there's unrest in certain parts of the country. And um, also there's unrest in the region uh, because Ethiopia has just started filling a big dam and there's countries around the area that are a bit um, nervous about that. So a prayer for the government of Ethiopia at this time that they will really be wise uh, as, as they move forward uh, for the good of their people. Mm -hmm. Emma, thank you so much for taking the time to, uh, to, 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 to chat. Um, to, uh, to us here in Cargron. Um and thank you for that challenge um, from the uh, from the Gospel of John and for um, filling us in because I think it's really important at these times when we can so much look inward and look at the the challenges facing us here but actually the, the remembering and certainly I was very keen that we would uh, make sure that the Harvest Festival this year looks outwards as well and um, so thank you for um, sharing um, those things and we look forward to welcoming you down in person to Cork at um, some time um, hopefully in the in the near future so thank you Emma. thank you thank you very much Robert and just thank you everybody just for your ongoing uh, friendship and and support uh, in prayer and giving and all that you've done just to stand with Chirpin Arm and our partners over the years.